welcome back, everyone. We're going to do is that we're going to do a little test driven development, and I want you to write your own test cases and then write the function. And I've got my list of steps here. What we're going to do, we're going to create two Python files. They need to both go in the exact same location. Okay. So in the case of our, you know, our students in programming, you're going to put it in your M drive folder. We're going to write the test calculator functions, and we're going to code for just one test. We're going to run that test. It should fail. If it doesn't, we have a problem. And then we're going to write a code stub for calculate BMI. And then we're going to save that calculator functions. By the way, in we're going to do this in calculator functions.py. So I better add that piece here. All right. So we're going to write a code stub for calculate BMI in calculator functions. And then we're going to practice test-driven development. So this is the BMI calculator is what we are going to create. All right. So let's start by getting a little bit of code in here. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to import some stuff here. Okay, It's always a good idea to import early on. So if we want to do a unit test, we have to import unit test. And it looks like this, import unit test. When you import, you're actually importing a file from the library. In this case, unit test. We don't have to put .py. The next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to import the, the program that we're going to test. We have to have it imported in order to test it. And that's the calculator functions.py. Oh, okay. well, you don't need a .py, do you? No, I'm sorry. No, you don't need a .py. Right. Thank you for reminding me. Thank you, Rick, my guest speaker for today's video. All right. So anyway, um, <laughs> feel free to correct me, whatever, because I do this stuff all the time, and uh, I don't catch it till halfway through the video. All right. But anyway, the idea here is we're importing unit tests so we can test, and we're going to import the file. Now, it's really important here that everything matches. you got to have a capital C, capital F. you got to have that other file. They need to be saved in the same folder. So let's, before we do anything else, let's go ahead and save this file, and let's go ahead and create the other file. So for students of mine, I recommend they just create a folder called unit testing where we can put our unit test samples in. And in that folder, let's go ahead and create a second folder uh, for our BMI calculator. Or actually, we're calling it the calculator functions. And don't worry about spacing on the folder because we're going to drop everything in there. So this is the folder where we're going to save it into. So I'm just going to copy that title and I'm going to save into the folder. So there's my folder. There's my unit testing folder. I'm going to save into there. I'm going to save into the calculator functions. I'm going to save it as test, capital T, E-S-T, calculator functions, dot pi, like so. Click save. Now it appears there. So now we're going to create another file. I'm going to choose file new. And I'll go ahead and just move it over here, and we'll call this calculator functions.py. Make it as a comment. Copy that. File save. Should be in the same folder. Now, when you go to save it, you should see test calculator functions, and now you should see calculator functions. So if I hide this window, you will see there it is, calculator functions. Can you? Now you got it saved. I'm going to keep my little guideline of what we're doing here. Let's continue coding test calculator functions. In fact, I'm going to bring up the other uh, file, calculator functions, on the window. So you, we've got that side by side. So the first thing we want to do once we import is we're going to treat this, it's like uh, object-oriented programming, which I know in, if you're in programming one, we haven't gone over this. But it's kind of like defining a function. Instead of saying DEF, you're going to write class. And so you want to just kind of follow along with me. We're going to call this known values. Okay, so we're going to we're going to test for known values, and so we're going to write a whole class that does this. Okay, I'm going to call it unit test, and we're going to put dot, and we're going to do test case, capital T, capital C, like so. so we're testing for known values. Okay, and then the general formula for uh, unit test methods, method names, is as follows. I'm going to write test. In Python unit test, we always begin with test. Test underscore, and we're going to give it a function name. In our case, it's going to be uh, BMI or calculate BMI. 
And then we're going to write our test description. What exactly are we testing for? So that's kind of the formula for how we're going to write it. Now, that's kind of a long name for a function, right, or a method. Well, we want it readable. We want to know that if, if a certain test fails, we want to know exactly which test fails. And the reason why is in unit test in Python, you could fail three or four tests, for example, and they will fail in different order. When unit test tests something, it doesn't necessarily test in the same order. So just by finding that one passes and the next one fails doesn't necessarily tell us enough. We need to know which one fails. So it's a good idea to have a good, well-written name. It's also easier to find a test later on when you're working on it. So it's just a general rule, general rule of thumb. So the, let's take a look at a BMI chart to figure out what we're going to test for. Okay, so we're going to take a look at this body mass index chart behind the scenes here. And let's get these windows back open. And one of the things you'll notice on the chart is we got a lot of different values that we can test for. Okay. So we can test for sort of normal values, like, uh, and we've got a lot of data we can use. We have our height in inches from 58 inches on the low end to 76 inches on the high end. We have in any given weight, so like on 58 inches, we have a low range of 91, a high range of 258. Now one of the things that you test for are going to be sort of boundary conditions or edge cases, things at the lower or upper range. So let's take the lower height and the lower rate and test to see that we get a BMI of 19. So that's one thing we're going to test for. Let's go ahead and code that out. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. All right. So we got to write a name for that. Def test. Now, the name of the function, and this is really important, we're going to do calculate little c, bmi, all uppercase. Okay, That's going to be the name of the function. And now what are we testing for? We're going to test calculate bmi for lower boundary. What we name it is kind of up to us, but it's good to have a description that tells us what we're testing for. And we're going to pass it self like so. Okay, so when we test, we want to capture the results of the function. And then we're going to check for expected output. Okay. All right, so how we capture the results. We've already, oh, excuse me, we've already imported We've already imported the calculator functions on this statement. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable. We're going to call it result. Call it result single. Sure, it's one result. Result equals. Now I'm going to write calculator functions. I'm going to put a dot, and it's calculate BMI like so. Notice. Because I've imported it, oh, this must be from a previous result. That's really interesting. It already gave me a little code hit there. That's because when I, uh, I was doing this for my other class. But when we run this function, we, we need to decide upon what are, what are our parameters. So I've already made the decision that we're going to, first of all, put inches. Then we're going to put in their weight in pounds. So I'm going to put 58 for the inches tall, and then I'm going to write 91 for the pounds, like so. Now, if we run this calculate BMI, giving it these two values in that order, the result should be an answer of 19. So that's what we're expecting. Okay. So I'm actually going to go ahead and put expected, like so, equals 19. So that's what we're expecting to get. You don't have to write it as a function. But by doing it, it'll help it be a little more readable for you as you're writing your tests. So now we're going to check for the expected output. We have to write self dot. I'm going to write assert. Two S's equal. Assert equal. Now, when we do assert equal, we got to put the expected first. That's what we want to get. That's what we're testing for. And then we're going to get the actual result of running the function. Okay, you got to do it in that order. Okay. 
Once you've got this like it, we're going to go down a little bit and we're going to do a little bit more coding to run this. Just writing class known values is not enough to get this to actually run the test. So we have to run the test in the global scope, which is basically not indented. And the way you run it, it's kind of a weird sort of syntax, right? If you got to do two underscores, name, underscore, underscore, is equal to, I'm going to do single quote, underscore, underscore, main, like so. And then indented, we're going to write unit test dot main, like that. And then at this point, you can go ahead and run it. So you click run, and it's going to, when you do run module, it forces you to save your changes. And the end result is it should fail, and that's what happened. That's test-driven development right there in action. However, we've got a lot of errors going on here, things that we should probably fix. For example, we have this attribute error, module, calculator, functions, has no attribute, calculate BMI. Well, what that's really stating is that we have our, our file. Let's get that open again. If I can find it. There it is. Notice there is no function defined. And in true test-driven development, we ran our test before we coded. But let's go ahead and try to define that. So now I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and define my function. Define def calculate BMI, and we're going to give it two parameters, inches and pounds, like so. And we'll do a little doc string here. I'm going to write calculate BMI. And watch this. I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I'm going to return zero. This is a method, or this is a function stub. So as a function stub, we, we want a function that can work, right? But it's not actually doing anything. So we're just write it so we get it. The save I changes. Remember I told you you got to save your changes. If I don't save changes, it's going to give me the same error as before. So I save my changes. I go back here, run it again. Now when it runs, it's a little different. It doesn't give me that error I had before, but I get what's called an assertion error, and I see ran one test, failed, Failures equal what? So now I have to basically calculate BMI and try to return that value. Before I go, I just want to show you, look, I got it to work. I ran one test and it was okay. Look what I did. I just returned 19. That's what I expected to see. Well, let's go. We got Mr. Whitaker done. All right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs>